Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Adam Cole comes out for a promo. He is immediately interrupted by Roderick Strong. Ten months later, we finally get some closure on the devil angle. So Roddy comes out. And for a while, it's funny. It's like they're still trying to convince Adam that he can't trust Max. When that's a bit abundantly clear now for ten months, Adam knows this. So they're talking about this for a while. And eventually, they point out, they started this together, they want to finish it together, but Roddy wants Max first. Adam just invites Max to come on and get his ass kicked. We get a video instead of MGF getting a massage. Somehow, he knows Roderick Strong is there. And says, whichever one of you can win three in a row, can wrestle me at full gear, and I won't show up until that night. And so Adam and Roddy and the crew all hug. We cut backstage while Kyle O'Reilly is jealous. Dude, you have other friends now. Grow up. That's true. But best anyway, friends, in fact. They're the best. Well, one of them is. But uh, actually, no, Trent left. There are no best friends there. I thought this, uh, well, he has other best friends, but I thought this segment was uh, not not great. The fans, I mean, there was no heat for this whatsoever because it was clear that the fans did not trust Roddy in the kingdom at all. They were just waiting for them to turn on Adam Cole. And then when Roddy says, we need to reform our group, you could tell they did not want them to reform the group. Hmm. They were waiting for Adam Cole to say, no, I'd rather be off on my own. And instead, Adam Cole goes, Roddy, I think that's a great idea. And the crowd is dead silent. <laughs> like, what? That's a great idea? So they have put Adam Cole back with Roderick Strong in the kingdom. Yeah. And I cannot for the life of me figure out what's going on here because max says whichever one of you gets three wins first can face me at full gear okay so then i'm thinking okay all right maybe roddy is going to turn on him and like adam cole will have two wins roddy will have one win and a loss so Adam is about to win the match, and then Roddy turns on him so he doesn't get three wins first. Hmm. Right? I guess. But then Roddy would have to get three wins first, and he would be a heel, to then face Max as a heel? That wouldn't work. <laughs> what? So I guess we got like six weeks, so maybe Cole wins two, Roddy wins one, Roddy screws him out of the third one, Roddy wins another... I mean, I guess it maybe they could do something like that just to to stretch this out, but I mean, that's the only thing I can figure. But then even in that case, it's like then Adam Cole looks like an idiot for trusting these guys because nobody in the crowd trusted them. Nobody. Nobody thought that they weren't gonna turn on Adam or that he should go with them. So I don't know. We'll see. A Jamie Hater Penelope Forward hype video. And then Renee interviews Jamie, who says everything Penelope says is BS. She wasn't handed anything. She worked for it. I'd fight you right now, but you're not here. And so she challenges Penelope for two weeks on Dynamite. The House of Black faced three jobbers. Now, earlier we mentioned there were... At least they were named. Two jobbers who were only identified as two beefy bastards. These jobbers had names, and boy, did they have names. Kevin Koa, Jaden Monroe, and Pirata de la Muerte! <laughs> That's fine. The... Pirate of death! Yes. God, yes! The death pirate. Or the death pirate, either way. Yes. So. They were murdered. One of them is literally murdered. Like, the opening move is Malachi hits his kick of death, and that guy's never seen again. Uh, Excalibur said the dude in the ring was Koa. I'm guessing he had the skull and crossbones on his ass, so I'm guessing that is Pirata de la Muerte. Probably a good guess. But uh, eventually a third one tagged in, who was definitely Jaden Monroe, a wrestling jobber if ever I've seen one. They kill him with everything and pin him with a curb stomp. I cannot believe how long you talked about that match. I love this match. God. <laughs> and Buddy challenges Adam Cole for no reason here. It was explained later, I guess. And uh, Kind of. And a, it's not a good reason, but it's a reason. Two matches for Fright Night. Shelton versus Swerve. Camille versus Statlander. Yes. Renee then interviews Adam Cole, who also is confused as to why Buddy's picking a fight with him, goes to ask him. and says, you got a problem with me? And Buddy says, I want to prove one point. That you're fragile. So Buddy Matthews hates Adam Cole because Adam gets hurt a lot. 
I like that uh, Adam Cole cared that he got challenged. It's like it bothered him. Yeah. And then the other question is, why does Buddy care if he's fragile? He's I don't get it. Yeah, but they're supposed to be baby faces. Are they? Yeah, House of Black, of course. Everybody's cheering House of Black. Yeah, cheered a lot. Yeah, they're <laughs> just be- they're just winning squash matches. <laughs> All right, that's not a heel gimmick. Sure it is. The murder the murder machines want to. They're squash nerds. Match. You want to see them kill them? Hmm. You just talked about how awesome that match was because they killed three geeks. You're trying to tell me you think they're heels? Come on. Well, we must now discuss Camille versus Queen Aminata. It sucked. A poor outing. Uh It's one of those. We talk about NXT all the time where you, most of the time, it because they're green workers, it feels very choreographed start to finish, and you, and uh, you can tell they're working together and not fighting. This was like that, except it still didn't look any good. They need no. more work together. Hey, listen, Lash and Jakara did not have a great match with damage control, and it was clear when it was over that they should stay in developmental longer. They were both better than Camille and Queen Aminata in this yeah, match. Yeah. They were out of position... They botched spots left and right. Yeah. To their credit, Aminata made a comeback, and the crowd kind of got into it, so there's that. But then they started doing these uh, submission attempts, and the place died again. Yeah. There was a horrific backbreaker into a powerbomb, something or other thing, a jigger. And then finally, Camille hit her, like... What the hell is this thing? It's like an airplane spin into a DDT or something. No, she did that or first. No, that was earlier, yeah. That was the torture record. It's like a reverse DDT thing. She gets this... It's terrible. It's like Crossroads. Except she spins one way, and her victim spins the other. It actually kind of looked like a Mercedes old finish that always got fucked up. I guess. And this didn't look good either. This looked very bad. And there's a post-match where she hit it again, and it sucked twice. So it's not like she screwed it up the first time. No, this this very much sucked. D- yeah. And then Statlander and this, came this out, and gotta I was go. like, God. I was, I was into this match until now. Until the last five minutes, yeah. Now I don't have high hopes. But Statlander's really good, so maybe it'll be fine. So they ran out, and they had a, they were having a stare down. Mercedes tried to start some shit, and it led into a tool and beat down, and Camille hit her dumb new move and dropped her. And that was that. Our last experience with the dorks... It's not... Excuse me. Our penultimate experience with the dorks outside. A truck arrives. They're all ready to fight, but it's the patriarchy. Sabian is, like, there, but he's also hiding. <laughs> this is This is, like... I, I hate this. This this is Rusev and Lana level storyline here. The fuck's going on with this guy? <sighs> so they chase him to the ring. Yeah, they, yeah. And they're they're about to have a talk or whatever, and then Hook shows up backstage, and she says, "Hook, have you found out who attacked your father?" And he says, "That scumbag in the ring. I'm gonna go kick his ass." So he lays out Nick. He goes right after Christian, Kip Sabian. Gives him a low blow. And then Christian says, Kip, I know why you did what you did. I'll deal with you later. Go get in the corner. And Nick tries a Wayne's World, but Hook grabs him in a choke. Christian hits him with the briefcase. Nick hits Wayne's World. Christian gives Hook the unpretty on the briefcase. Listen to me, Tyler, he says. This isn't what you think it is. And I was like... I need to know what it is before I can think I know what it is. And I don't know what it is, nor do I think I know what it is. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. And I don't know how in the world... I don't know, man. Kip Sabian left with Christian. Yeah, that happened. So, this is one... Because I am perpetually online. And I saw a source saying that apparently the idea is... Kip Sabian wants Christian Cage to be his father figure. I don't know why that would take months and months to explain. And we Just fucking walk up to the guy and say... Can I call you dad? Jeez. I mean, come on. Yes. yes, we know that Kip Sabian's father passed away. This has been mentioned for months now. But, like, it led to a match with Nick. He lost the match with Nick. They make fun of his father for being dead. He it's kept, like, if he, this means something to you, like, go, Christian, will you be my father? He kept interrupting promos, and they chased him out, and it went nowhere. He's all creeping around like a creeper. Yeah. I don't get it, dude. I don't like it. There you go. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.